this older couple is kind of getting on in years and they haven't been to the doctor in quite a while so they decide it'd be a good idea just to go in and get a checkup just make sure everything's okay so they go down they see the doctor they get their exams all their blood work everything comes back okay and the doctor's sitting with them afterwards and says yeah it looks like you guys are doing just fine there's really nothing that i could suggest for you other than you know as we get a little on in years the memory is usually the first thing to go so maybe start writing stuff down but other than that you guys are good to go and so they go home and he's sitting in the living room and his wife comes out of the kitchen and says you know i was thinking about making us some hot fudge sundaes what do you think about that and he says yeah that sounds pretty good uh, but i'd like nuts on mine and she goes, okay. And he goes, hey, you remember what the doctor said? Maybe you want to write that down. And she goes, uh, no, don't be ridiculous. I can remember that. And he says, hey, probably ought to write it down. And so she just goes, ah, goes in the kitchen. She's in there for a while. She comes back out and she's got a plate for him with eggs and bacon and hash browns, white gravy on the hash browns. And she goes to hand it to him and he takes one look at it and he says, See there? You forgot my toast. Let me talk about my first experience starting off living the van life and the cooler. In 2012, I decided that this was going to be the life for me. At least I, I thought it might be and that I'd give it a try. And so I bought an Astro van off of Craigslist and I started piecing things together. Not really knowing what I would need. Didn't know anything about solar. There, there was probably three YouTubers talking about the traveling lifestyle and Westphalians and things back then, but they didn't even post on a regular basis and they didn't cover near the information you'll find out today. So I was kind of flying blind and piecing things together as best I could on the budget that I had. And I wasn't able to swing the cost of a refrigerator. So I got a cooler and I put ice in the cooler to extend the life of my perishables, my, my cold soda, my cold beer, whatever I wanted to put in there. And Here's what that experience is. I did it for a year. You go grocery shopping, you're at the grocery store and you pick out the, the uh, perishables that you wanna put in your cooler. You buy yourself a couple of bags of ice and you pour it all in. First of all, the perishables that you put in, you're only gonna get about a third of the space of that cooler because two thirds of it is the ice. Second of all, the stuff that you put in there, unless it came from the freezer section of the grocery store, is room temperature. So that room temperature and that ice have to normalize. And so it melts the ice at a much faster rate than if you just went out on your motorcycle or whatever you have and just kept supplementing the ice in there and uh, hitting the drain plug to drain the water. You gotta pull it out, put it, pull it outside to drain the drain plug. And heaven forbid you get any chicken. And I used to take my chicken out of the store packaging, put it in freezer Ziploc bags. And no matter how careful you are, Sooner or later, more than once, one of those chicken bags is going to get loose and turn into chicken juice all over the inside of that cooler. And when that happens, you can forget about trying to have a sip of your soda or your beer or anything you have in a can after that. I don't care. I would take, I would bring it out. First of all, it's sticky and nasty smelling and it's just disgusting. You take it out, you spray your Windex on it, wipe it off, spray your Windex on it again wipe it off, spray water on it to clean the Windex off, wipe it off, and you put that can up to take a sip, you're still smelling disgusting chicken juice. And that happened multiple times, even trying to take every precaution I could. That's one of the really nastiest sides of coolers. Another thing about a cooler that I experienced is it was costing me about a dollar a day in ice. So I figure in the year I had the cooler I bought ice for it. I spent $365 to keep my stuff cold, plus the cost of the cooler. So eventually I went and got a job for a while, was able to save up the money and get a refrigerator. It's called a low draw refrigerator. These don't draw as much as uh, if you bought a regular refrigerator and plugged it into your 110 inverter. They're very low draw. I got it, I liked it. It broke down, I fixed it. It broke down again and it got me to thinking this thing just came out on the market. It's got eight reviews, four and a half stars, and it's $279 and change, $280. If this thing just lasts me 280 days, 
I start to get in the money. I start to get in the black on it and it's starting to pay for itself. Even the Dometic only lasts six and a half years and that's because I fixed it five years in. Going the expensive refrigerator route so far for me is a toss up. I wanted to give this thing a try. We're gonna do two reviews on this. The first review we're gonna do right now. It's gonna be taking it out of the box, hooking it up, seeing it cool and figuring out how it operates. The second review is I've got it set up, I've got my solar set up where I've got 680 watts on one side and about 200 watts on the other side. We're gonna plug this into the 200 watt side. So let's just say you've only got 200 watts, it'll tell you if it'll run it. I'm pretty sure it's gonna run it because it ran my Dometic. I'm talking about in perpetuity, not just for the day, but every day will 200 watts run this thing. If not, then we gotta get more. It's not the refrigerator's fault necessarily, but that's gonna be the second test. And then we'll just put a little sub test onto that let's see how long this thing lasts so when you see me a year from now ask me hey man how's that extreme power fridge doing for you it's been a year it's been two years all i've got to get is 280 days out of it for it to pay for itself over having ice in a cooler even if this thing lasts three years it's competing with the dometic that's what makes me so excited about these units also I, I, I needed this size, so I measured for it and I got this size because I've got a cabinet that's got to slide in. It's a 26 quart. If you want to almost double that to a 50 quart, it's six more dollars. So it just depends on the room you have. <clears throat> Super affordable. That's one of the things I like so much about this. We just need to see how it performs over time. Let's go ahead and take it out of the box. The first thing I see is that the control panel is on the same side as the vents. That's important. When you get yourself a, a refrigerator like this, you wanna make sure that you don't shove it into some little cubby hole where these vents can't breathe. And the company figured this out in their design and they know that you're gonna to wanna to see the controls to see what kind of things are going on with the display. So they put the vents up front. You can stick this back into a, into a little cubby hole like I'm gonna do, a cabinet. If you're able, let's say that you don't, don't have space as a big concern like me or maybe you don't have a refrigerator and one acting as a freezer so you want one that uh, can be all encompassing and so you get a bigger one, you've got the room do yourself a favor and cover it with a moving blanket when you're not using it. Cover it with, if you've got grandma's quilt and you're not using it for anything, cover it with that quilt. We don't want to cover up the part that's got to breathe and, and choke it down, but everything else, cover it. And that'll help insulate the refrigerator so it doesn't kick on as much and it'll extend the life even further. Now let's go ahead and open it up. We've got a side door open. Most of them are you know long ways the hinge is, is on the side this one's on the or on the ends this one's on the side i like that you've got a compartment you see there on what's on the right hand side to you you can use that to put things in there that you don't want to get quite as cold if you set it to freezing like i do or if you're using it as a refrigerator maybe you put your cheese up there maybe you put your your lettuce or your shredded uh, cabbage up here so it doesn't get kind of icy this upper compartment will stay not quite as, as cool, so it gives you a, a dual zone almost feature. That's how I've done it for almost eight years now, and it works out great. Let's see what's in the, the uh, box for the power. We have a 12 volt input, and we have an AC input. If you're using this in your van, in your rig, we don't want to use the AC input because that means we have to plug it into an inverter and it's going to draw more power through the inverter and run your batteries down faster. They're just giving you this option. Maybe you're going to a hotel somewhere for a couple of days and you don't want to get hit with that mini bar price at the end when you're checking out. So you want to bring your own stuff. This allows you to be able to do that, plug it in it into a wall outlet. If you're in an RV park and you've got power as part of the deal with that and you plug into your shore power and it lights up all your AC outlets, you can go ahead and do this, but if you're using solar and batteries to power this, for sure you want to use the 12 volt plug. Now this is what I do. I'm not saying to do this and I'm not saying certainly that the company recommends to do this, but I'm going to take this in here and I'm going to clip this plug off and I'm going to hardwire it right in 
to my battery system because plugging it into a socket going over bumpy roads it just works its way loose I didn't start doing that I learned to do that after my fridge wouldn't work I couldn't figure out what was going on and when you have a weak connection it gets hot so if I'm up and down these these uh, bouncy forest roads or out in the desert going over rough stuff the socket isn't going to stay in all the time over time it's going to work its way out so I learned to clip the cord hardwire it in now the first thing you might be thinking is hey man isn't there a fuse inside that and if you clip that off you're gonna you're gonna go around the fuse and that's not safe you're right there's typically a fuse in the ends of these and so what I'm gonna do is I clip it off and I put an inline fuse on the hot side on the positive side you would just go to your auto parts store or go on Amazon and say hey man I need an inline fuse holder I think they even sell them at Walmart and just put yourself an inline fuse holder see what this thing's rated for I, I'm just taking it out of the box I don't know but put yourself a little fuse in there maybe a seven and a half amp fuse whatever it calls for and off you go now you're gonna say you might be asking yourself well when you clip that wire how do you know which one's positive and which one's negative if you look closely on every wire like this that I've ever seen the negative has a little bit of a maybe you want to call it a satin finish or a rough finish where the positive side is more glossy and smooth and so that tells me which side of the wire to hook up to my red and black my positive and negative so let's just say you don't believe me saying that and you say hey man I don't trust you this thing's expensive I'm not gonna reverse polarize the uh, power and, and mess it up and have to worry about whether they're gonna cover the warranty and have to wait that much longer to get the replacement so don't believe me this is how you could do it clip it back a little bit we don't want to clip it right up at the plug and peel it apart get your uh, your wire strippers and strip it back a little bit get your voltmeter out and plug this in to a female 12 volt socket cigarette lighter and then put your meter on the wires and the wires will tell you which side's positive and which side's negative now you're going to get the same reading for voltage either way but there'll be a little negative dash in front of the negative uh voltage so that'll tell you that that's reverse polarity so you've got a way that's fail safe and you can have peace of mind to test this yourself with that let's go ahead and head inside i'll wire the power up into it and we'll figure out how all these settings work I'll, I'll get it set down to i like my freezer at about 10 degrees we'll mess around with it and see what works with the things i put inside of it but uh We'll pull out the old Dometic, get that thing out of here, and get ourselves set up with refrigeration again. Let's go. It's a good looking fridge. It's metal with a plastic top and bottom. I'm not super concerned about the aesthetics, but it feels pretty solid. I like that. Here's the one that I was using that's cracked out. You can see the thermostat I put on it to keep a little more life out of it, but six and a half years is all I got out of this one, doing everything I could to keep it going. So let's put this over here. And I'm lucky because I already have the power cord from the other one. So I already have all this length and I've actually got a fuse mounted over there. It runs around so I can either have it on the the small side of the solar or if I need to I can put it on the heavier side just with a little uh, switcheroo all I really have to do is clip this plug it in everything lights up we've got a little USB port here if we were in our vehicle and wanted to plug something in to charge it while it's plugged in we could do that Press the power button, switch on, long press the unlock button for three seconds to unlock. Press plus or minus for temperature settings. It's showing, it's 71 degrees right now. It's on max cool instead of eco mode. It's showing that it's got a full charge. That doesn't matter for me because I know I'm running it on solar, but if you're in a car or you've got just one little battery in, you're not sure how it's doing, this is telling you that it's doing okay. And so that's kind of a cool feature. It also has in the manual something about Bluetooth settings. I don't know if this is one of those manuals that covers every unit. I think it is. So model this one, this one, model this one. I'm pushing the buttons while I'm doing that. So it's 71 degrees right now. And check this out. 
it's got a operating panel app so let's see if this one has that feature built into it I don't see a little Bluetooth thing right there but I will definitely check it out and see if I can download an app for this and get it to work with it and let you know I'm acting like it's gonna be like I'll get back to you I'm just gonna edit it and you'll see it like that so it's 71 degrees I want it to be oh it's locked I tried to do it and the little lock start symbol started flashing so it's saying hey man we don't want you to set the settings by mistake while you're just reaching for something so because all you have to do is touch these you don't have to push down on them so I'm gonna hold this for three seconds get the lock to go away and then it's minus four Fahrenheit is as low as it goes I don't want it minus four but I wouldn't mind it if it was let's do zero zero degrees Fahrenheit what else do I need to set this manual is only three pages so it's cool that they're not giving you one of those huge books with every different language it's just all English and you can see four pages if you want to count the back Whoa, what did I do so it just timed out and went back to lock mode now it's it's running right now and as loud as my voice is I don't know if you can hear that on the mic, but it's super quiet. This would not kick on and wake me up if I was sleeping and, you know, the furnace kicks on and wakes me up sometimes, but this isn't anything close to that. So it's noon right now. I've got my bezel set to the time. We'll see how long it takes to get from 71 degrees down to what the temperature we set it for. While it's cooling, we see that it's drawing 3.7 and then hundredths of an amp. So 3.7 amps is what I'm getting on, on my amp meter for the draw. What that means is these things usually cycle a third of the time. So if there's 24 hours in a day, eight hours would be a third of the day. So it's going to run for about eight hours. So you multiply eight hours by 3.4 amps and that'll tell you how many amps you're going to need in your battery bank to be able to run this thing in a day considering that you're topping off your batteries every day and you're getting good sun on your solar panels now this number this this run a third of the time number is going to vary it's going to vary if you wrap it with a blanket it's going to vary if you don't open it as much if you open it more so this just gives you an idea what kind of power consumption you're going to be looking at with this so 3.7 times eight hours is i just multiplied 3.75 by eight hours and it comes to 30 so this thing's going to pull about 30 amps out of your battery bank every day so let's just say you're on a super tight budget you're just getting started hey man i can't afford all the stuff to run these uh, refrigerators well on this one you can you can get a, a 100 105 amp our uh, deep cycle battery from Walmart for right around $100, $110. It's, it's lead acid, so you can only use half those amps, but that gives you about 50 amps a day to play with. So if you're just by yourself and you have a 100 amp battery and you've got 200 watts on the roof, hitting it pretty good, getting it topped off every day where it's in float, you can go ahead and use this for give or take 30 amps a day, and that gives you a balance of 20 amps a day for your laptop or your tablet. Just giving you an idea. Down to 66. It's been about eight minutes. When this fridge comes in the mail, it's going to be shipped from a shipping service and you never know what happened between the time the company sent it out and you got it. So do yourself a favor and let it sit upright for 24 hours at least, maybe a day and a half before you plug it in because there's fluids inside of it. And if those fluids are set sideways, if the box on its side, it's not good for it to turn it on like that. So just make sure that you put everything in your favor before you're fired up for the first time. Download the Alpicool app from the App Store. This thing's cooling actually faster than the Dometic did. I remember when I would hear the Dometic kick on. It was pretty quiet too, but when it would kick on, it wouldn't move that fast. It's at four degrees and it's been, here you're seeing a little more than 40 minutes, but I've it got to four degrees at the 40 minute mark. 
So four degree, down to four degrees in 40 minutes is kind of a nice, easy way to remember it. It's super quiet. I've got the mic right up to it. And then I've got, I'll put the mic up to the Dometic. It's running right now at the time. The Dometic is actually a little bit louder, but they're both so quiet, we're kind of splitting hairs. It's now been 15 minutes and the extreme power is down to three degrees. I don't really feel like hanging out another 20 minutes to see if it gets down to zero. When I set my Dometic, I set it at four degrees as the low. Now this thing will kick off when it reaches its temperature and and then there's a variance, so it's not just kicking on and kicking off, kicking on and kicking off. And so it's gonna warm up a few degrees, then the compressor, will, the thermostat will tell the compressor to kick back on and it'll cool back down. So I'm happy with the reading of it. I believe it's an accurate reading. It's, it's cold when I opened it up uh, to mess with the thermostat, it's cold. So the only other thing now is to see how it stands up over time. Remember, if we're spending a dollar a day on ice, and we've got to come out of pocket on the cooler itself. Let's say you buy a $30 cooler. You might buy a $50 cooler, but let's just say you buy a $30 cooler and this thing is 280 bucks. Well, you take a dollar a day and you subtract the cost of that cooler and this unit only has to operate for 250 days for you to break even and start getting ahead. Now, I'm not saying that's how long it's gonna last. We're gonna see, it may last several years, but the Dometic premium price six and a half years limping along a little bit with the uh, aftermarket thermostat. So I'm pretty bullish on this thing so far. We'll see how it lasts over time, but if you're living in your vehicle and you're thinking about how you're gonna extend the life of your perishables, get yourself a refrigerator. It comes out cheaper in the end, no mess, no chicken juice, and you'll be really happy with it. You don't need a, a ton of uh, battery or solar as we saw, 30 amps, a day pretty much is I'm just throwing that out there as a general number and that's not asking a lot of your battery or your solar power do yourself a favor and get yourself a refrigerator thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next upload I've got other products to review coming up that are related to the off-grid van life and also we'll see you at the van build we're only five weeks away thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next upload thanks a lot and figuring out how to operate. That's the exact same plug. I could have just used the same plug. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> when this comes in the mail, it's gonna be, you know, shipped from a pack packet. Does it look okay? Is it filming? Is it same recording? There's sun right here. Hot. There's no way to turn it off, just slide to answer it. Right now, if you want to go ahead and pick this up and get it coming to you, right now, turn that off. <laughs>